Capelto here. I want to go over a uh, UMass emergency medicine lecture that I'm going to be giving next week, and this may be helpful for many of you that have any emergency podiatry concerns. The first aspect I want to go over is what's probably the most common foot problem seen in the emergency room, and that's ingrown toenails. There are a lot of different types of ingrown toenails, and there's different ways of treating them. If we'll start out, we'll start out looking at this ingrown toenail here. There is a uh, some drainage, and it's it's stuck in the edge. You really can't see it on this view, but if you look at a view like this, it would look somewhat ingrown. And unless you get this piece of nail out, you're not going to be able to resolve this infection. This infection is caused because the nail is stuck in the skin. If the nail wasn't stuck in the skin, you probably wouldn't have that. Before it gets to this level, sometimes it can look like a, a little pus pocket. As you can see, there's a little uh, white pocket here that um, would have pus that needs to be drained out. It's probably from the nail growing into the edge. And there are some more advanced ones if it develops a lot of extra skin. This is called hypergranular tissue on the edges. This is more of a chronic ingrown toenail. This would be an ingrown toenail that you may want to consider getting a, a, um, an x-ray, especially if it's been going on a long time to make sure it doesn't go deeper. So basically the different types and the different treatments are, are different. For an ingrown toenail like this, you're going to just take out a little edge so you'll know of the toe, take out the edge. For this, you tend to pop the pus pocket and remove a little edge of the nail. For this one, since it's involved both sides, I may actually take the whole nail off. For this one, it's really just only localized, so you may just be able to free up the nail edge and have them do some soaking. This one has one edge involved where it's all swollen, so you're going to need to remove just the edge of that nail. You can see they've tried a slant back. This is a procedure where you cut back just the side. In this one where it's so, so swollen, I would remove the whole toenail, and you may even want to get a x-ray to evaluate. Um, how you should not treat ingrown toenails, so don't use uh, a matchstick underneath the nail to lift it up. See, they were trying to lift the edge out of the uh, of the nail that's going into the skin. Don't use the toenail removers. These usually include some type of a salicylic uh, acid or even a topical anesthetic, especially if you're diabetic. Don't do that. And also, if you're going to be numbing up a, a toenail and doing this procedure yourself, don't num numb the tip. Don't numb the tip. You want to numb back here at the base of the nail. So basically, the proper technique is to use uh, around 3 cc's, you can use 5 cc's of a 1 to 1 mixture of 1% lidocaine and half percent marcaine. You inject at the base, so you do a wheel right here, go down to the base and do another wheel, and then you can do that on the other side. Some people like an H technique where you actually go across on both sides as well. Uh, that is, is done in the office, then you can remove the whole nail, part of the nail, whatever you'd like. Some people opt to only do half of the side if they're only doing this side of the nail. I prefer to do the whole, whole nail just in case. Some of the more permanent options would be to do something called a matrix, a chemical matrix, matrixectomy. This is where you take a, a Q-tip and you can either use sodium hydroxide or phenol uh, into the edge for between 30 seconds and a minute, and then you... Uh, rinse the area, and that causes a chemical burn to the nail matrix, which is down here. This is where the nail grows from, and so as it, it won't grow back. And that's a treatment. This typically wouldn't be done in the emergency room. This would be done in the, in the office if for a chronic ingrown toenail. A few things you need to be careful of. Be careful if the person is older, has diabetes, has poor blood flow, because sometimes it may look like an ingrown toenail uh, because of a painful nail, but it may be from just poor circulation. Uh, finally, there is a, a sharp technique. It's actually where you bring down and, and cut out uh, the actual matrix, a sharp matrixectomy, and then you suture things together. This tends to heal better for people that are diabetics versus a chemical procedure. And here's a video that kind of explains how to do that matrixectomy. A few questions that are commonly uh, asked about ingrown toenails. Do all ingrown toenails need antibiotics? The answer is no. Usually removing the aggravating area in the nail edge won't need an antibiotic. If it still looks infected, if there is pus that you're concerned with, if the whole area is red, if there's cellulitis, then you should be on an antibiotic. Uh, typically we do uh, Keflex, Cephalexin for a week. When to remove part or whole, we did talk about that. If the whole nail is involved or very, very swollen, you'll remove the whole nail. If only a part, you'll only remove a part. 
When do you need an x-ray? If it looks really bad or it's been infected for a long, long time, there is a slight concern of bone infection. And then w if there is an infection, you'll want to either do an antibiotic or follow it closely. So let's look at some problems that you may see in the emergency room coming in for heel pain. Heel pain, it doesn't seem like something that would need to be noted at the emergency room, but people come in. Uh, typically, you'll find people that start working out and the second day or third day afterwards, they have excruciating pain in the bottom of the plantar fascia. Uh, it could be a plantar fascial tear, kind of hard to tear that area unless you're doing some type of abrupt motion. Usually it's more due to inflammation, but the cause is normally in the back of the calf. Tight calf muscles don't uh, really allow the foot to function as well, and it puts extra strain on the plantar fascia. Uh, it, usually if you put your pressure on the plantar medial heel region, that's where the plantar fasciitis is felt. Plantar central region uh, can sometimes be to the bone spur, can be a bursitis, can be other things. And the typical treatment in the office would be physical therapy, a cortisone injection, and then maybe an insert in the shoe. Achilles tendonitis is very similar, and this can either be from a bump in the back, which is called a Haglund's deformity, so if there's a bony prominence, or if it's only to the tendon, it could be an Achilles tendonitis. Both of these can be treated with physical therapy, heel lift, and other types of medical treatment. Uh, what's the difference between a wart and a corn? People may come in and have a wart. Normally, they wouldn't come in for a wart that's non-painful, but they may come in with a painful wart. And how do you determine if it's a callus or a wart? Usually a wart has little pen, pinpoint black areas on it. So if you trim off the top of the skin with a razor blade, you can see those pinpoint bleeding. Sometimes it's not as clear. Sometimes it, it, it looks something like this, where it may be a uh, callus within a, call it a kind of a clogged sweat gland or a porokeratoma, or it could be from a bony prominence, like the bone may be prominent, the fifth metatarsal, or here the fifth digit could be prominent causing that, or even the first metatarsal or one of the sesamoids could be prominent causing this callus, and this could even develop into an ulcer in this region. How do you treat it? You trim it down. You can either remove it in the office. You can use topical salicylic acid. You can use many other types of treatments, lasering it or uh, five fluorouracil Aldera, in our, in our office, typically we either remove it or use a, uh, a laser for treatment. And then some really, really bad calloused or even fissured heels, you can trim those down and then use a really potent uh, medica medicated urea type of cream to help soften those. Uh, what's the difference between an ulcer and a callus? This tends to, you see this more with people that are neuropathic with diabetes. Uh, a big callus on the first metatarsal head due to a prominent first metatarsal head or in the second digit. Uh, this is an ulcer, and this can go very close to the bone. You see the redness, the cellulitis. This patient would need to be on an antibiotic uh, until the cellulitis is cleared up and then determine if the bone is infected with x-ray or an MRI and then possibly uh, have to either remove the toe or clear up the infection uh, or remove the bad bone if there's bad bone. He here you can see this callus actually is turning into an ulcer. So it's a callus, but it looks lifted underneath. And if you would trim this off, you would tend to see these. These are, are ulcers due to increased pressure. This is probably a patient with neuropathy where they don't feel this. They wouldn't feel this. And these tend to be caused by the biomechanics. So high pressure to the front of the foot. Uh, w how you treat that, you can try treating it with, with um, different types of uh, topical skin substitutes, keeping them off of it. But sometimes surgery is needed where you take out either a sesamoid for something like this, or you would take out a metatarsal head or lift up a metatarsal head along with uh, possibly lengthening the Achilles tendon to reduce the pressure to the front of the foot. Something like this would have high pressure right here as you have to increase the joint motion back here, uh, whether it be removing some bone from the joint here or removing some bone from the joint or helping the joint to function better. Uh, these are the main issue you'll be seeing them for in the emergency room is infections and people concerned with infections and also people that are sometimes trying to uh, get pain medication, saying that they're very painful. Uh, many people with diabetes and neuropathy, they don't cause them pain, but there may be other reasons for seeking pain medication. Pain to the front of the foot. Uh, front foot pain, there's a lot of anatomy there that can cause different problems. Uh, stress fracture is pretty common. Uh, this is a nice, beautiful stress fracture. This, is, this would only show up two to three weeks or, or longer after it looks like it's healing. Normally, when you look at it, you really have to observe to see if maybe one of the cortices 
is is slightly broken and and it may even not be based on that you may have to use a tuning fork to determine if it's a stress fracture or not because you may not be able to see it if it just happened on one of the metatarsals it could also be metatarsalgia which is just a painful metatarsal bone or or the capsule around the joint region and there are different areas and different areas of pain uh, also something that can happen, you may see this on an x-ray, is a flattened metatarsal head. This is actually called an avascular necrosis. It's due to a lack of bl a bone, a blood supply to the second metatarsal head here, and it tends to flatten and develop arthritis in there. Also, people can develop pain within between the, the, the inner metatarsal spaces. So, for example, between the second and third here would be a prime area for an aroma in that area. An aroma is a squished nerve, and uh, so treatment for this would be a, a walking boot or a cast, this as well would be a walking boot, maybe a cortisone injection, and this as well, cortisone injection, uh, if you're not concerned about the joint, and then a walking boot to, to calm things down. Uh, there's a lot of different forefoot pain that, that can happen. So fractures, uh, fractures you're going to be seeing a lot in the emergency room. Uh, some of the more common ones would be metatarsal head fractures or this Liz Franks fracture. You always have to look between the first and second metatarsal uh, bases to see if there's a, a spread between there. If there is, there is uh, a Liz Franks fracture injury that may need surgical repair. Pain to the back of the ankle region, there is something called an ostrigonum or a, a fracture in the back of that piece of bone or a fracture of the uh, hallux right here. You can see the kind of an avulsion fracture here. This is through a growth, growth plate, so this is more severe uh, in terms of this may uh, change the growing and it may, uh, of this child. And also uh, the common um, stress fra uh, fracture of the fifth metatarsal. Um, and there can be different areas. It can be just the, the bone pulled off here. It can be a fracture here. It can go into the joint. There's different types. This is the traditional Jones fracture that you see. And these you have to be aware of and treating would be non-weight bearing or putting them in a walking boot until they follow up. Uh, also, I want to go through uh, Charcot, which is very similar to a stress fracture uh, or a fracture of the foot. Usually, you'll see someone in the emergency room for a red-hot swollen foot, and it's very common to mistake it for an infection, uh, a blood clot, and many, or even just a fracture. But with a, a, someone that has neuropathy, uh, they may even just as simply as step off the curb or do a little bit more walking and they could get a foot that looks red hot and swollen. This is a stage zero. This is when you would want to find uh, them. And it would be red hot swollen, normal x-rays, and the MRI would show some uh, bone swelling, bone marrow edema. If it gets to this area, it may be uh, a little bit too late because there's some fragmentation going on and the bone is being reabsorbed. There's dislocation of the joints. And then for this type of a patient at stage one or even stage zero, the treatment is to totally keep them off that foot with, with a knee roller or something like this called a crow boot for a period of six months until the swelling comes down and then until everything kind of coalesces and then remodels and fuses in there. Um, Charco is something that can be commonly missed both in the private practice and in the emergency room. And typically what happens when it's missed is someone is treated for antibiotics with antibiotics for an infection. The foot is elevated, the swelling and redness goes down. And when they start walking again, the swelling and redness goes up because of the shark coat, not so much because of the infection. They're being treated for the infection, but that's kind of the red flag or the red herring. People think that it's an infection, but it really isn't. And uh, that's the, the brief here, uh, lecture for emergency room residents. Hope this is helpful for you. Um, thank you.